Welcome! This video contains an introduction, an interview so you can gain deeper understanding of the subject from spirit level, and a group frequency calibration so you can start to clear the frequency distortion patterns around this topic. Enjoy! Hi everyone, my name is Karen Chong and I'm here with my co-host Dennis Kelly. Not everything is as it appears to be. So it's important that we develop what I call spirit level street smarts. And what that means is because not everything is as it seems, there are things and people who appear to be very bright and light, who are actually very dark underneath. So it's really important that we start to clear and to hone our intuition and our perception so we can see things as they really are. That way, as we navigate through life, we can avoid the things that are potentially dangerous to us and recognize the things that truly propel us forward. So let's dive right in. Dennis? Karen, I've heard you talk about spiritual street smarts. Now, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm not quite sure what that's all about. Uh, street smarts, uh -huh. spiritual yeah. street smarts. Yeah. So it, it sounds like I should be kind of on the look out for something yeah or stay on my toes yeah and all I, those things okay but i'm not quite sure where are you going with this <laughs> okay so what i mean is by spirit level street smarts is essentially to just as when you walk down a street say for example in a new city that you don't know and you're very aware of your surroundings uh it's similar in the spirit realm we tend to often i feel like when we um it's very easy. I've, I've noticed in my clients that when they come into the presence of somebody who they think is a guru or they think is better than them or has some special powers or a shaman or whatever, they kind of become unaware. It's like they turn off their spidey senses and they um, stop paying attention and being aware of their surroundings on the spirit level. Now, part of this is because, in part, some people have distortion patterns around giving their power away. Okay, so part of what I'm saying is that we need to clear the patterns around our intuition and our perception so that we can remain aware, on, even in spirit level. It's just uh, an amplified version of that. So we can feel to ourselves, like, is, is this really what it appears to be? Or is it something different? So as I go through life and have all these different experiences, yeah. diff different people, different activities, yeah. different travels, different adventures, mm -hmm. is what you're saying is be aware. Yes, be very aware. And just because a lot of other people trust this one individual, there are cases now that are coming to light where that's happened and there's been like series of very abusive patterns of behavior. You know, and I'm not going to talk about anyone in particular, yeah. but they're definitely coming to light now people who were in positions of spiritual power, who were masquerading as the light, that were actually oppressive or dark. Okay, so let me explain darkness and light. Okay, so, um, and you may remember this from another episode, but I'll just repeat just because I think it's helpful to recap. So the darkness, or let me talk about the brilliance first. So the brilliance doesn't need us to sustain because if you, as you go further and further and further out into the brilliance, at some point you just become energy. There is no body, right? So the brilliance doesn't need form to sustain itself. It just becomes unbound energy. Self-sustaining. Self-sustaining, yeah, because yeah. it's there, unbound energy, it doesn't yeah. need form. On the other end of the spectrum, you have darkness. And as you go into the darkness, it becomes more and more and more dense. And things that are of the darkness, okay, um, they require form in which to sustain themselves. So meaning they need to feed on something. And oftentimes when I mean feed, I mean literally, they need to feed on your, your bioenergy or your chi or whatever you want to call it, right? The Chinese would call it chi. Um, they sometimes, if it's worse, it's more predatory, they actually feed on your soul, which is really kind of horrifying. So that can happen as well. So it's not like the darkness is really mega stupid. It's not that they're like, hey, I'm the darkness. You want me to feed on your soul? It's not like they're, you know, you're not like, yeah, let's do that. That sounds awesome. Come on in. <laughs> I mean, some people might be like that, but most people, I, I think, would not choose that. So they masquerade as something. And usually they can surround themselves with what looks like light. Okay? And so once you open your heart, they can come in. All right? Mm -hmm. So it's the opening of your heart 
or you're giving away of your power. So elevating them above you and allowing them to come in, that's where the challenge is. Okay. And that's when they can start to attach into you and start pulling away your power, either from the bioenergetic standpoint, which is your physical aliveness or from a spirit standpoint where they're actually feeding on your soul. Mm. So either way, it's not good for you because it's going to deplete you very quickly, either on the spirit level or on the bioenergetic level. So I'm, I'm, you know, so if I, if I start to get that sense or that feeling Mm -hmm. that something's not right, Mm -hmm. you know, this looks good, Mm -hmm. but underneath this, there's something that just doesn't feel right. Right. Yeah. So what, what am I to do? Yeah. So, um, so interestingly, in the physical world, it mirrors, right? So if you were walking down the street and you felt uncomfortable, you have a couple of options, right? Like you're walking down the street in the yeah. city you don't know, right? You, have a, you, you can walk to a different street. You can get on your phone and call somebody you know. You can, you know, walk to a, a, a store and just see if you feel, you know, that type of thing. So, you've done, so on spirit level, you also have a couple of options. So one is you leave, you disengage from that person. So what will start to happen is if the darkness needs to oppress, right? In order to feed on you, it needs to control you in some way. So the key is control. So if someone starts asking you to behave in a certain way or to do certain things or that you have to like, you know, for example, start disassociating from people that you know, start um, changing your, uh, the way you live in a way that seems detrimental to you and beneficial to them. You only need to listen to them. You shouldn't listen to anyone else. You need to start coming, you know, giving them a lot of money. Whatever the different mm. things are that seem like control over your behavior, that's not in alignment with pure source. Because pure source actually is neutral. It's unattached to what you do because you have free will. And pure source is all about life experiencing life. So it's never going to tell you what to do. Like you must do this yeah. because you have free will to experience life in different ways. If it's something's trying to control you, then it's like, should do this, should not do this, should do this, should not do this. Yes, that's control. So it, it sounds like, it sounds like a, a real good indicator is whenever I have a sense that I'm starting to give up my power. Yes. Is I'm starting to surrender to someone else. Yes. Or I'm allowing someone else to make all the decisions yeah. or tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. Those are good indicators. Yeah, exactly. The only thing you should surrender to is pure source. Yeah. That's it. Nothing else. There shouldn't be no surrender to anything but pure source, yeah. right? So if anyone's asking you to surrender to anything yeah. other than that, something's wrong. So, um, and so the other thing I want to say is that oftentimes when people start down this path, you know, you know they get into this kind of awakened state of everything's great, everything's good, it's all good. It's not all good. Okay. If you feel like someone's trying to control you, you need to defend once you need to defend yourself. So that means get out of there, disassociate from, start asking questions, just like defend, right? There's no, you don't need to be all okay with it. It's not about that. Okay. So it's totally appropriate to defend oneself. So for example, I mean, if you're walking down the street, and then all of a sudden you hear someone walking towards you in a way and then there's a group and then you start to feel like very uncomfortable if not scared i mean it's appropriate you don't want to open your heart to the universe at that particular point yeah. in time you might want to start sprinting you know what i mean like it's yeah. it just i'm just like it's it's like it's the same thing in, in, in the spirit perspective like you don't necessarily need to be all okay and like groovy with everything at all times yeah. if it doesn't feel good to you yeah. start to ask questions or get out of there you know? We we yeah. have to keep a level of discernment. Absolutely. And yeah. we you know as we evolve and as we awaken, our intuition becomes stronger. Yeah. And so as we start to get that vibe or pick up that sense or whatever that might be, mm-hmm. listen to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I also feel like the more um, that you can clear in terms of your frequency distortion patterns, you can trust yourself and your instinct, yeah. Yeah. right? So part of it is right. to do the work of the clearing so that you can start to trust yourself. Because a lot of times, like for example, when we're walking down that, like the physical example, we're walking down this dark street, right? In a place we don't know. We're like, oh, well, you know, our instinct is like, get the heck out of here, right? Yeah. And then we think, oh, okay, well, maybe I'm just being overreactive. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's not, you know, we don't listen to that instinct. It's like something's wrong. Yeah. Something's very, very wrong. I need to get out of here. Okay. It's the same with spirit level, right? So you need to hone 
What I'm saying is you don't want to, you want to clear your intuition, clear your perception. So you don't, so you don't have this self doubt when that, when you need it, you know what I mean? You trust yourself. You're like, okay, received message, getting out. You know what I mean? So it's about clearing the patterns around that so you can listen. And, and you talk, you talk about, you know, walking down that street mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, connecting with a stranger or whatever, but this could also be a friend or a family member. Yep. Or, yep. you know, they're perceived as, you know, this mm -hmm. wonderful person, they're yes. outstanding in the community or whatever that yes. might be. Yes. But underneath that could be the darkness. Yes. And it could be controlling. Thank you for raising that. I'm really glad you did. So yes, it can be people who are close to you and you just never noticed yeah. it. It's funny when you, when people start to do frequency work more and more, they start to notice the patterns of the people around them because you yourself are clearing. So the more you can do it, the more you can see yeah. clearly and you can choose what to do. You have what it gives you is choice because you'd be like, okay, I, I'm going to disassociate from this now because it's not healthy for me. It's not good for me. It's actually really oppressive to me in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, uh, spiritual street smarts. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Karen, could you help me? I hear so often when I look at uh, your video or your website, GFC. Exactly what is that? A GFC is a group frequency calibration, which looks a lot like a guided meditation on a particular topic. And what I'm doing is I'm helping you to remove the distortion patterns of that particular topic. And because you're coming together as a mastermind in a group to connect to pure source even more and to clear the distortion patterns of this particular topic, what happens is a tremendous amount of momentum starts to happen because of the energetic of the entire group. And each individual is able to move faster and ascend higher than they could have on their own. Welcome everyone to the group frequency calibration on spirit level street smarts. So let's begin by taking three deep breaths. And whilst you take those three breaths, if you could bring your attention, awareness, focus from your belly button all the way to the hollow of your throat. So if you can imagine the space between your belly button all the way to the hollow of your throat. As you take these three breaths, you're going to inhale, holding your breath in for a count of four. And then whenever you're ready, releasing your breath and holding your breath out for a count of four. Then on your next breath, whenever that is, inhaling and holding your breath in for a count of five. And on your exhale, holding your breath out at the bottom of your breath for a count of five. And then on your third breath, Inhaling, holding your breath in for as long as you think you can. And then on your exhale, after releasing all the air out of your lungs, holding your breath out for as long as you think you can. And notice if you can actually take yourself to that edge of discomfort or if you back off a little bit and let your breath out earlier. Just notice what you choose to do. And whenever you're complete with your three breaths, 
bringing your attention, awareness, focus to your xiphoid process, which is right at the base of your sternum. So your sternum is that big thick bone in the center of your chest where your ribs meet in front of your body. Your xiphoid process is right at the base of your sternum where it becomes that fleshy point that's a bit tender when you press on it. So as you bring your attention there, breathing normally. And let's go ahead and ask ourselves the following question. And that question is, how can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source? And the question again, for those of you who are new, how can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source? And as you ask yourself that question, please imagine, sense, feel, or become aware of a brilliance deep within your body. It starts to bloom. to expand even more. And to become even more radiant as you become aware of your connection only to pure source. Good, and on my side, I'm working to increase your natural bandwidth or your capacity to take in, in even higher frequencies. From pure source. Good. Now, bringing your t keeping your attention rather on your xiphoid process, and just so you know, for those of you who are new, that I am working on you in groups and subgroups, and that I will be no making noises on my end, as you've likely noticed already. So you'll you'll hear me exhale sharply, you might hear me hum, you might hear me yawn, and that's just the sounds I make as I remove the distortion patterns. And lately, I've been working more and more in silence as I work with higher level frequencies. So if I'm silent, I am still working on you. So just note that. Continuing on as you keep your focus on your xiphoid process. So this is an imbalance in the um, inst inst instinct. It's like when the mind uh, overrides instinct. Okay. Now for a subgroup of you, you freak out very easily at anything. It's like you're oversensitive, so you always think the darkness is attacking you. For some, for a small subgroup of you within that subgroup of you, that makes sense given your relationship with the darkness and what you've had in you. Okay, so it's not unreasonable. It is, however, 
oversensitized. It's like PTSD a little bit. Okay. So you will create things where um, there isn't any darkness, but you imagine that there might be. Okay. Um, for another subgroup of you, you um, over rationalize things, meaning when you the warning bells are going off, you over rationalize them with, well, maybe it's because of this, or maybe this is happening instead, or maybe I'm not misunderstanding, or there's a sense of like, I don't want to be rude, or I don't want to be inappropriate or hurt their feelings, all those different things. Okay. So on either end of the spectrum, it's a miscalibration of the mind over instinct. Okay. And the instinct is not clear as a result. So, um, and when I'm, when I'm calling it instinct instead of intuition is because at this level where you, sh it is fear, right? For a reason. So that's an organism protecting itself. It's a base instinct. Animals have it. Okay. It's like, you know, something bad is coming or about to happen or you're going to be attacked or whatever. Okay. That base instinct. So this is beyond, um, this is not intuition, which is, um, sort of of a higher order. This is a protection of the organism itself. This is the physicality. That's why I'm calling it instinct. All right. So your instinct is not calibrated properly. So what I'm going to do is, depending on the subgroup you're in, work on this here. So your instinct becomes clearer and you respond to it appropriately. Now, this is going to require for most of you, a confirmed delete of, de of certain patterns, okay, depending on what subgroup you're in. So that means that on a conscious level, um, when something arises where this instinct shows up, you either, you, um, well, not either, you confirm delete the pattern by doing something different than you would normally. So if your pattern is to soften your instinct or not pay attention to it because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings, you need to hurt someone's quote unquote, hurt someone's feelings or just say something or choose to leave or whatever it is. So meaning you're going to choose to protect self. Okay. If your thing is to be over um, sensitive to darkness when there isn't really there it's to hold your space and just to watch and know that you're strong enough okay and to really see if there's something there as opposed to just going into this panic state of oh my god something's attacking me okay so and i'm not saying that if you feel like you're being attacked that you shouldn't defend of course if your instinct is that you're being attacked then defend yourself but i'm saying if you have a tendency to do this all the time to see if for just a moment or two you can pause and really discern is that thing there and if it is then react appropriately if it isn't then don't all right this is refinement so keeping your attention in your sci-fi process because for some of you in the subgroup where you tend to think something's attacking you or you're very worried about it you don't have a tendency towards attracting the darkness so you don't have to worry about it i'm talking about a specific subgroup all right you're just worried about it all the time so Keeping your attention on your xiphoid process, even if your mind wants to wander, which for many of you it will, bringing it back to your xiphoid process so we can recalibrate this more efficiently. Since this is a collaboration between you and your higher self and me, rather. There we go. Good. And now bringing your attention to your solar plexus between your belly button 
and the base of your sternum. Okay. This is about the distortion pattern of fear. So what happens is um, with this running, um, you can't, uh, different things happen to, to different subgroups of you, which is um, not optimal. Uh, for some of you, you run the fear pattern very strongly. So again, you're oversensitive to um, something happening. So you're always afraid. So we're going to lessen that for you. For others of you, the fear response is something that you avoid or that you oppress, like you suppress it within yourself, okay, and you don't pay attention to it. That fear is there to te tell you something. It's to catalyze you into action. So removing this, this suppression. And often you stay in relationships or circumstances longer than you need to because you're suppressing. So let's just remove this. Okay, like you should get out, the warning signs should be going off, but you're ignoring them because you suppress them. And you're doing this because of lineage patterns or religion or cultural patterns, all right? So I'm not blaming you, please note that, but it's happening. So note that as well. And um, just be aware of that. And for others of you, your fear puts you into paralysis. So you don't you kind of go into this like deer in the headlight as opposed to going into action because okay, you're not sure what to do. So let's just help you with this so that when you encounter a situation where your instinct goes off and you feel fear and you need to remove yourself from the situation or find a different way out from that situation, you can find options to do that and then you move into action on it as opposed to staying there. So helping you with this as you keep your attention, awareness, focus on your solar plexus. Fear is an important emotion sometimes if it's calibrated pop properly. Very nice. Good. Bring your attention now to your throat space. Okay. So this has to do, to do with a distortion pattern of having um, your, well, two things. One is like having your voice suppressed, meaning you don't want to speak up in situations where you should, in the sense of protecting yourself. Okay. Um, and for another subgroup of you, you don't trust your voice or you don't trust your instinct. And so therefore you are afraid to speak up because you don't know whether your instinct is correct or not. So you don't trust self, essentially, you know, trust in self. So, uh, and then there's another much smaller subgroup where as women, 
you were told to uh, close your voice down, to not say anything, okay, when abuse was happening or control was happening or um, something like this was happening, okay, or um, uh, an um, aggression or something was happening. So depending on what subgroup you're in, working on all of you, keeping your attention on your vo your throat space, all the way from the hollow of your throat into your roof palate of your mouth. Yep. And now bringing your attention to your solar plexus between your belly button and the base of your sternum. Okay. This is interesting. So this is a distortion pattern of um, fear, but it's fear of uh, punishment or... Um, uh, for trusting your instinct, okay? Either punishment or, uh, for some of you, uh, being judged harshly, or, um, um, yeah, or uh, for some of you, another subgroup of you, um, fear that you might be wrong, right? Like, what if, what if this person isn't um, somebody that you should be worried about or move away from? or that type of thing, right? So you're worried about um, that person um, um, being wrong about that person and either hurting their feelings or being judged harshly by them, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So this is all... running through the solar plexus, depending on who you are. It might be one of those patterns as opposed to all of them. For some of you, you have combination. And now bring your attention to your heart space. This is the last pattern we're going to clear today. And this is the distortion of low self-worth or non-deserving of protection of self. Okay, so you allow yourself to be violated so, or aggressed or because um, you don't feel worthy of standing for yourself, of protecting yourself. I realize that may sound odd, but it's here. For many of you, if not, not for the vast majority of you. So let's remove this. The brilliance that you are is worthy of your protection, of you standing 
for yourself. In fact, this is required if you would like to move into the upper levels. Good. And now it's still in the solar plexus. I'm just going to make adjustments to your pain bodies, which are getting active since you've done a lot of work here. Keeping them integrated with the change on the spirit level. Good. This brings us to the end of this session. I look forward to working with you on the next GFC. These GFCs help people release distortion patterns. It's my sincere hope that you benefit profoundly from this series, which is why I spend so much of my personal resources creating these as my gift to the world. If a GFC topic resonates with you, often more work that can be provided in this one GFC is needed to really clear or loosen deeply held distortion patterns in areas that are sticky. Because these patterns are like layers of an onion, usually there are multiple layers to individual topics. Depending on how much of a challenge this topic is for you, it may make sense for you to go deeper than what this session allows. If you feel this is the case for you, please visit sphericalluminosity.com for more targeted support.